Uh, and uh, thank you everyone for coming to my talk. So today I will talk about my recent work of fractional Fermi liquid from doping spin triplet doublons. Okay, uh, so the work is based on these two papers in collaboration with Ashvi and Zhen Zhu. So Zhen Zhu used to be a postdoc at both MIT and Harvard. And just recently he moved back to China as a new faculty. Uh, so the motivation for my work is on the whole doped cuprate. So this is a familiar phase diagram. And uh, at the overdoped regime, as everyone knows, it's just a conventional Fermi liquid. But when we decrease the doping, we enter an exotic metallic state, which is usually called the soda gap matter. Uh, inside this phase, we find uh, a large part of Fermi surface is gapped out, and we are left with only some Fermi arc. And more recently, there is an experiment with the Hall measurement that shows that the camera density actually drops from a large camera density to a small camera density. So at a small doping regime, it seems the camera density is equal to the doping level P instead of one plus P. So if you interpret the camera density as the Fermi surface volume, this violates the Latinger theorem. Uh, so in my understanding, there are basically two different classes of theories for the gap. Uh, so one class is people just think that the pseudo gap is described by some kind of symmetry breaking order. But in the cooperate, at least at a higher temperature, uh, there is no e experimental evidence for long range the symmetry breaking order, uh, especially the density wave order. So, so people are forced to use fluctuating symmetry breaking order. So it's kind of a conventional situation. And in another class of theory, so people think that the pseudo gap is caused by some kind of motor physics instead of symmetry breaking. And in this line of thinking, uh, we can imagine there exists a symmetric pseudo gap mate. And the Latinger theorem is compatible with a small camera density because we can have some deconfined gauge field. So the face is a fractional mate. Uh, so the problem is that uh, this pseudo sort of gap matter is actually found at finite temperature. And at finite temperature, it's actually very hard to sharply distinguish these two different uh, bases. So I think this is one of the reasons why it's very hard to center down the debates. Okay. Uh, so in the last one year, I have tried some studies related to pseudo sort of gap matter following in two orthogonal directions. So in the first direction, uh, in together with uh, Subir. So we are just trying to propose some variational wave function or effective field theory uh, based on our intuition. So to be honest, we do not understand the energetics so far. So we just uh, propose some kind of fractional Fermi liquid phase, uh, which can kind of explain the Fermi arc. So if you are interested, you can look at our papers. Uh, but today I will talk about my work in a different direction. Uh, in this direction, I will move away from corporate. So I will consider other models. And now I, I want to do numerics in one dimension or constant one dimension. And the goal is to find a, a symmetric pseudo sort of gap matter as a ground state. So I can make a sharp statement. So, okay. So I will propose a new kind of TD model. But before that, let me review the conventional TD mod, uh, which people here should be very familiar with. So basically, we start from a spin one half mod insulate, then we dope some hole. So the hole is just an empty site. That is, the hole can hop in the background of spin one half moment. Uh, so in total, you have three states at each site. So this model, of course, has been studied for decades. And there are some numerical results. So in one dimension, we understand the phase diagram very well. So basically, it's just a conventional Latinger liquid, which connects to the free Fermi model. So it's kind of boring in one dimension. Uh, in two dimension, uh, numerics is hard, but there are some DMR, DMRG results and constant one D. So when doping level is large, we believe the ground state is a conventional Fermi liquid. Uh, something interesting may happen at a small doping. 
So for example, uh, people found some evidence for superconductor in quantum one D DMRG. Um, but as far as I know, there is no evidence for exotic emitter in our frust frustrated lattice. So, so even malt insulator is a spin liquid. So you, you have some kind of deconfined gauge field. But it seems that when you dope it, the gauge field just uh, disappears. Uh, there is actually a very simple understanding based on slave boson theory. Uh, basically, we, we can represent the whole state with a slave boson. So when we dope the system, we will have a finite density of these slave bosons. And at zero temperature, they just condense. So originally we have a U1 gauge, gauge field from this pattern construction. But when this slave boson condense, the gauge field is fixed. So we just have a conventional phase. So, so this is just some intuition that for this kind of TT model, the ground state may be just a conventional. So when we go to finite temperature, of course, we can suppress the slave boson condensation and have some exotic matter phase. But as I said, it's very hard to treat the finite temperature regime. And now my goal is to find an exotic matter at zero temperature. So I need to find a different model in which uh, the slave boson condensation can be suppressed. So that's my strategy. And uh, one idea I have is that maybe I should uh, let the double or the slave boson carries some internal spin structure. So it has several flavors. In this case, the condensation may be frustrated. Uh, so we actually found uh, such a model uh, in this paper with Demo, so who is a graduate student at MIT. So at that time, uh, we were interested in SU4 hybrid mode at a feeling 1 plus x. So at a feeling 1, we just have a multi insulate. There is a SU4 spin moment in the fundamental representation. Uh, then we dope the system. We create some double. Double just means we have two electron per cent. So if you consider a SU2 model, so this double is just a spin singlet. And you just uh, recover the conventional TG mode. But for SU4 model, it's more complicated because the double actually carries a no trivial spin representation. So it's in a six dimensional representation of SU4. So in this case, if you wanted to represent the double with a slave boson, you need uh, six flavors. So it's some kind of SO6 slave boson. So naively, you cannot condense the slave boson without breaking spin rotation. So uh, I was excited at that time. I was thinking that maybe I will just find a exotic metal with different confined gauge field. Um, but uh, later, so in this paper, we convince ourselves that uh, Conventional Fermi liquid is still the most natural ground state because we found a different uh, pattern theory. And in this theory, we, we, we just uh, get a Higgs phase. So I don't want to explain the detail, but uh, I just want to say we think Fermi liquid is still the ground state. Can uh, I just ask what dimension is this? Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. So in one D, I checked it numerically. You just recover the conventional Latinger liquid. Uh, in two D, I think uh, Fermi liquid is still the ground state. Okay, so this result is kind of disappointing, uh, but uh, this model still inspires me a lot. So, so based on this intuition, I can propose a different kind of TJ model. So in previous slide. So the double is in the anti-symmetric representation of SUN. And now we just say the double is in the symmetric representation. Uh, so if you are not familiar with the young tempular diagram, it's fine. Because in this talk, I will just focus on SU2 case. It's quite simple. So for SU2, uh, when you see a single block, it just means a spin one half formed by one electron per cent. When you see two uh, block like this, it means a spin one moment formed by two electron per cent. So basically this TT model means when we dope the spin one half mount insulet, uh, the doped double is a spin triplet instead of a spin singlet. So this is a kind of no trivial TT model. So at each side, we will have five states. And uh, I have some pattern construction of this TT model and I convinced myself that uh, we can have a kind of exotic fractional Fermi liquid phase. 
So there will be still a U1 gauge field remaining deconfined, even at zero temperature. So I will tell you the details of this theory later. So, so here I just want to say I have some intuition that this model will satisfy my goal to search for exot for exotic matter. Okay. Uh, so in the remaining of the talk, I will try to study this unconventional TD mode. Uh, so the first I want to tell you that the model may be relevant to real experiment. So, so I will consider, you know, we hold up a spin one half mode inlet. And the most popular way to realize a spin one half mode inlet is to use some transition matter oxide. Uh, so here we will focus on uh, square lattice structure, so quasi 2D material, uh, like a cuprate. So at each square lattice site, you will have a transition matter atom, like a copper atom. So this atom will have one hole on the dx square minus one square orbit. So in the following, uh, is there a question? Okay. Uh, so in the following, I will label the orbit dx square minus one square as d1. So there are some other orbitals in the system, like a dz square orbit, which are labeled as d2. Uh, there is also an oxygen orbit, I will call it p. Uh, so the, for the material I consider in quasi 2D, so this p orbit and the d2 orbit has higher energy than the d1 orbit. So when, when we have only one hole at each site, so this hole will just occupy the d1 orbit. So it just provides a spin one half moment, and we have a spin one half mode inlet. Okay. And now we dope this. So we add one hole. So now for the doped site, we have two holes. That's a double. So naively, you think uh, you know you just have a very trivial double state with two holes occupying the D1 orbit. So this is a spin singlet. Um, but this state has a double occupancy of D1 orbit, it costs a very large. Hubbard U. So it turns out that uh, it's energetically, energetically better to let the hole occupy the next uh, orbit. So it can oc occupy the P orbit or D2 orbit. So in this way, they can minimize the Hubbard U. Okay, uh, but this P orbit and the D2 orbit are very different. So, so the P orbit is actually from oxygen. So oxygen is not on the square lattice side. So it's away from a square lattice. So around each square lattice set, you have four oxygen around it. And we can build a one orbit. So the one orbit will have a center at the square lattice, but it's actually fat. That's a superposition of these four oxygen atoms. And there is a large humping between the, this P orbit and the D1 orbit on the square lattice set. And as a result, you get a larger super exchange. This means if the hole enters the P orbit, you will favor the spin singlet like this. So D1 and P will form a spin singlet. And in this case, of course, we have two kinds of spin singlet and they can hybridize with each other because D1 and P can hybridize. Uh, but it doesn't matter. So as long as you have a spin singlet, we can all, always map it to an empty set. And then we just recover the spin one half conventional TG mode. So this is the model from Cooperate. Uh, but we can consider another Euro situation in which the D2 orbit is actually has smaller en energy than the oxygen orbit. So the doped hole will enter the D2 orbit. So the D2 is another uh, D orbit on the square length site. So there is no humping between D1 and D2. They are orthogonal to each other. Uh, but there is a large Hund's coupling between them. So that's the Hund's physics. As a result, so the hole will form a spin triplet double. So D1, D2 will form a spin triplet like this. So in this talk, I will insist that we have a SU2 spin rotation. As a result, spin singlet and spin triplet, they cannot mix. So basically there are two different scenarios on whole dope or spin one half mode insulate. So one is this conventional case, which has been studied for decades. Uh, the other one is this uh, unconventional case. I will call it as a spin triplet TJ mode. It uh, has not been explored so far, uh, but I will try to 
studied in this talk. So as a matter of principle, you can imagine this situation can be realized so as long as you can choose the energy of the D2. I mean, it's just a matter of number. And the one promising candidate may be some kind of nucleate. Uh, so last year, there is actually a very exciting experiment by a Stanford group, so Harold Huang, uh, fabricated a nucleate material. So it's kind of similar to cuprate. They just replaced the copper atom with nickel atom. And the adopt site is still, you know, you have a spin one half from one hole on the D1 orbit. But then they add the holes. Uh, this nickelator is different from cuprate. So people found that the oxygen band is actually further away from Fermi lab. So for this material, uh, there may be a good chance that the spin triplet doubling is favored. So we can realize this unconventional scenario. Uh, this is not uh, very clear now. So people have tried to study this material using some DFT methods, but uh, different groups give opposite results. Uh, sometimes I even found uh, one single group give opposite results. So some people say spin singlet is favored, some people say spin triplet is favored. So experimental result is also not very conclusive. Uh, so I, I will not try to make any claim on this material. All, that, all I wanted to say is that uh, the IURA case with the spin triplet double may have already been realized in this material. And even if it's not, it may be realized in future. So in the remaining of the talk, I will just focus on the model itself. I will not try to say anything about the experiments. Okay. Uh, so let me first tell you the model. Uh, so we have a spin triplet double. So the TG model has a five dimensional Hilbert space at each site. So we have a singly occupied site. So I will call it as a signal. So it means we only have one hole per site. So there are two such states leveled by spin one half. Uh, there are three different uh, doubling states because it's a spin one structure. And we can project our microscopic operator into this restricted uh, Herbert space. So we have two electron operators, D1 and D2. Uh, but in this model, so D1 is actually fixed to be zero. So the, the number of particles in the D1 orbiter is fixed to be one. So D1 is equal to zero. So the only electron operator we have is D2. So only D2 can move. So I will just call it C. So, so you can project C into this five-dimensional Herbert space. You can write down a Hopkins term. Uh, it looks simpler, but it's actually very complicated because you need to deal with the projection to the Herbert space. Uh, so in this case, of course, the W also has a spin structure. So you, you have the traditional J coupling between singular, but you also have you know, coupling between double and singular, and uh, between double itself. So, so there are several different spin coupling. Uh, so for simplicity, I will assume these spin couplings are equal to each other. So I can only track one parameter in the mode. Okay. Uh, so the model looks very complicated, but we can solve it in one dimension using DMRG. Oh, by the way, is there any question about the model? Uh, I, maybe I had a short question about the, the assumption you just made about the G, J prime equal JD equal J. So yeah. um, is it a random choice or is it like a high symmetry choice? Uh, I mean, so you can derive these terms following some two value expansion. What I can say is they are roughly equal to each other. So I just say they are equal to each other. Okay, but I'm just, I just mean, is there some... Oh, no, there is no enlarged symmetry. So the only symmetry is as your two spin rotation. Okay, thanks. Uh, so so it, it doesn't matter too much. Can, can I also ask a question? Oh, uh, yes, sure. What's the difference of your model from the standard double exchange model? Uh, traditional standard double exchange model which gives ferromagnetism, which is localized electrons and uh, small doping uh, uh, for mobile electrons with narrow bands interacting by Huns rule. Uh, yes, I, I, yeah, so I, I'm not very familiar by the model, but I think it's kind of similar. Uh, but in here, our, our take is uh, Huns coupling to be infinite. Well, 
Uh, in double exchange model, usually people consider Hans rule coupling very large. Uh, yes, there are some, uh, some changes, some modifications with smaller uh, Hans rule coupling, but standard treatment for Hans rule coupling very large. But in principle, it's actually looks like the same model, exactly. Uh, I guess so. I, mean. yeah, I, I think I agree with that. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, so, so our focus on the limit that the Honda's coupling is infinite. So I just uh, restricted myself to the spin triplet state. Okay, uh, so the model is complicated, but I can study it with DMRG in one dimension. Uh, so, so here I, I use the parameter g over t equal to one half uh, for this slide. I, I will tell you something about the other value of g over t later. So let me focus on one third filling first. So one third means the density of the W is one third per set. So this is from infinite DMRG. Uh, we actually found a fence which is not very conventional. So it turns out we have a small pocket. Uh, in addition to it, we also have a neutral spin mode at the momentum pi. Okay, so let me show you some evidence. Uh, so first we can extract the central charge from entanglement entropy, so that's equal to three. This means there are three modes in the ground state. Uh, we can also calculate the nk. nk is equal to ck dagger ck. That's just the momentum distribution of electron operator. Uh, so here you will find a small Fermi surface. So the Fermi surface volume 2kf is equal to x over 2 uh, instead of 1 plus x over 2. So that's a small Fermi surface. Uh, and we also calculate a spin spin correlation. So we find two peaks. So there are two modes. So one mode is that actually the, just the 2kf of this small Fermi surface. But there is another mode at a momentum pi. Also the x-axis is in unit of 2pi. So that's at a momentum one half 2pi. Okay. And in the density-density correlation, so we, we found a 2kf excitation and a 4kf feature uh, corresponding to this small Fermi surface. But this uh, Pi momentum mode does not show up in the density density correlation. It's also absent in the electron distribution. So I think I can say that the, this mode, momentum pi mode, is neutral. So it shows up only in the spin mode, in the spin part. Okay. Can I ask a quick question? Uh, yes, yes, sure. So it's about the uh, upper right plot. It, so it's 1D system, right? Um, uh, it's one dimension, yes. Right, and it looks like it's a there's a Fermi C of some kind. Oh, yes, uh, yes, yes. So uh, I was surprised that it, you know it have very sharp drops in NFK, uh, unlike the uh, Lattinger's paper, one D. I mean, it's, uh, I mean usually I mean, it's a parallel, right? As at the same time, you have par apparently kind of parallelish. Uh, uh, structure factors for S of Q. So I just want to understand how to reconcile, you know, different kinds of behaviors of N of K and S of Q, S of minus Q. Uh, I mean, uh, it looks sharp, but uh, I think it's not a delta function. So if I, I zoom in, maybe it's still parallel. I mean, I didn't look at it carefully. Mm -hmm. But I think even for conventional TG model, sometimes you can see some sharp structure. And, and what about the structure factor for uh, the spin? Do, do, I, I mean, I, I see I see a, a spike, but uh, uh, it, is it expected shape of the spike for one D? Oh, shape! Uh, I'm not sure about the shape. I never okay. studied it carefully. All right. So, so you basically you just focus on the position of the space of the of the singularity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I mean, in principle, I can extract the exponent, but I haven't done that. It's possible. Right, yeah. So, so basically, you're interested in the, in the size of the Fermi C and... Uh, and yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, I think it's the most striking feature of this phase. Right, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, if you follow the Latinger theorem, the Fermi surface should be large. It should be 1 plus x instead of x. And there exists another mode, which is, seems to be neutral. So it shows up only in the spin. Yeah, well, like the theorem, I mean, how, how, I'm not even sure what, what does it mean for the system, like the theorem. 
uh, I, I can comment how I sent yeah, okay. the latest that. But, but you can you can see that the central channel is three, so there are three modes. Right? So two modes are from the, this small pocket, and there is one single mode from just from this neutral spin mode. So it matches with the central charge. Okay. Uh, so I also study other doping. So with finite DMRG, so I, I can study many, many different dopings. Uh, so there is one special doping, so that's at 50%. So at this doping, it turns out the double uh, wants to wants to form an insulate, so it, it forms some kind of charge out, so the system is insulated. But, uh, it's just because this doping is too special. Uh, so you, you can track the energy derivative to the doping level, and you find some features at this 50% doping. But if you are away from it, so both the first energy derivative and the second derivative are very smooth. And we also study the momentum distribution for different doping. So when we increase the doping, so we just found that this Fermi surface increases its uh, volume, uh, except at 50% doping, because it's insulated, so you do not see a Fermi surface. But if you further increase the doping, the Fermi surface comes back. Okay. And in the spin-spin correlation, you always find these two modes. So one mode is from the 2KF of this small Fermi surface, uh, the other mode is always pinned at the momentum pi. Okay. So it seems that we have just have a small Fermi surface plus an additional spin mode. Okay. So now let let me comment on the Latinger theorem. Uh, so in one dimension, people can prove a rigorous Latinger theorem. So which also applies to our model. So the the statement is the following. So, so this is from the, this original paper, but it's too long. So let me just summarize summarize it. So the statement is that we must, for a symmetrical phase, uh, we must have a gapless state at a momentum one plus x over two. So that's it. That's the statement from the theorem. So for the conventional Latinger liquid, uh, this required mode is just the two kf excitation. So then you can fix the two kf to be equal to one plus x over two. So that's a large film surface. Uh, however, in our case, so this required mode is actually split to two different parts. Uh, so one part is from the small pocket. It provides a 2kf, which is equal to 2x over 2. Uh, the other part is from the spin liquid part. So it gives a one half moment. So in total, you satisfy this theorem. Uh, so if you are familiar with the fractional firm liquid as proposed by Seta and Supia, you will realize this is just a one diversion of your fractional firm liquid. So, so as a result, I will just call it as a fractional Latinger liquid or LL star. So star doesn't mean there is a, an additional spin liquid part. So I, I will explain it in this slide. So the existence of uh, LL star phase is actually quite obvious for a condo Hansberg mode. So you, you imagine a different model. You have a spin localized moment, and on top of it, you have some itinerant electron uh, with some kind of uh, counter coupling JK. Okay, uh, so in the limit that JK is equal to zero, in the decoupling limit, obviously we will have a Latinger liquid star phase because the D2 just decoupled from the spin moment. It formed a spin, it formed a small pocket and this localized moment just form a spin liquid phase. So that, that's the ground state of spin one half chain. And as you know, the spin one half chain ground state can be thought as a one dimensional version of spin liquid. Okay. Uh, but our model is more neutral than that. Because in our model, you can view that uh, uh, JK is equal to minus infinity. So in this limit, uh, so the decoupling picture here can, is not valid anymore because this D2 now cannot move coherently because it couples to the localized spin moment with a, an infinitely large Hundes coupling. Actually, uh, if we make the J over T small, so if we only have a hopping term, uh, it turns out the ground state is a firm active. So that's, that's just the direct exchange mechanism. So basically you want to polarize the localized spin and you polarize the itinerant electron so it can move coherently. 
uh, but now we increase Java T. So that uh, it's not happy with the spin polarization. So we need to make a compromise. So to make uh, both humping and J term happy. So it turns out uh, this LL star phase will emerge as a competition. So that's what we found in numerics. Uh, but we still need to understand so why we can have such a phase because we have a very large coupling between them. So, so usually FL star phase is understood as condo breakdown. But in this model, you know, there is a infinitely large hound coupling. So how can condo breakdown break down possible? So that's the question I'm interested in and now we're trying to understand it uh, using some patterns here. Okay. Uh, so the idea is I will just take the Honda's coupling to infinite uh, project to the spin triplet subspace. Uh, in this restricted Herbert space, so we cannot use the macroscopic operator, but we can try to propose some kind of mean field theory uh, using some pattern theory. Uh, so first of all, this signal state is created by some spinner F tank. So this is the traditional pattern theory. Uh, but now we have this uh, spin wall doubling. Uh, we can say it's created by some slave boson, but the slave boson in this case must carry the three flavors. Uh, as a re result, the slave boson theory is not very useful because we cannot condense it without bringing spin rotation symmetry. Uh, so it turns out a more useful pattern re representation is we represent the doubling state uh, with two Fermi with two colors. So a doubling is correct. A doubling is created by some one dangers are two dank. So the, the, the idea is that we want some one and some two to form a orbital singlet or color singlet. Then in the spin space, it will be automatically a spin triplet. Okay. Uh, so in this kind of representation, so the electron operator can be written as three Fermi operators. So it's F dagger sa one sa two. So basically when you analyze an electron, you first analyze the double, and then you create a singular. So in this way, you can match the matrix element of C in the restricted Herbert space. And we need to impose two constraints, which give us a U2 gauge structure. The first constraint is that the density of F and sa, their sum is equal to one. This gives a U1 gauge field. Uh, the other constraint is that the psi Fermi forms a orbital singlet. So here the tau is a polymetric in the orbital space. Uh, in another word, tau x will inter-exchange the sa1 and sa2. So if sa forms the orbital singlet, then because of the Fermi statistics in the spin space, it must be a spin triplet. So if we satisfy this constraint, we will restrict SA1 and SA2 to form a spin triplet. Uh, this constraint will give us a SU2 structure. Okay, so under this SU2 structure, F Fermi is neutral, but the SA transforms as a dot matter representation. Okay, uh, so in total, we have a U2 gauge field. Uh, we will focus just on two uh, subgroups. So we have two U1 gauge field. One is AC from this first U1 gauge field. Uh, the other one, I will call it AS. That corresponds to the tau component of this SU2 gauge field. Okay, so we have three patterns, F sub one and sub two. So F will couple to two AC, sub one will couple to AC plus AS, uh, sub two will couple to AC minus AS. Uh, so of course, we also need to and the physical gauge field, the big A. Uh, so I will assign the physical charge in the following way. So F Fermi is neutral. SA1 and SA2 each carries a half charge like this. And uh, we will dope the system. So at the doping level X, so the density of Fermi F is one minus X. And the density of Fermi SA is equal to X. SA1 and SA2 always have the same density. Okay, so this is the basic structure of our from our pattern theory. Uh, any question? Okay, then let me continue. Uh, so we, we can just uh, you know substitute the pattern theory to the original Hamiltonian. 
uh, you get something very complicated. So the Hawking term will have six operators in this time. Uh, but it's, it turns out that zero temperature is very simple. Excuse uh, because, me. Oh, uh, yes, please. Maybe some technical question. So when you take a gauge field to be one half, what does it mean really? For example, is there something like compactness you need to worry about? Uh, so this big A is a probe fit field. You know, it's a classical field that's not a dynamic, so we do not need to worry about it. And these are still some U1 gauge field? Or? Uh, yeah, it's the physical electric magnetic field. So that, that just means you can... Uh, it, it just means this SA1 and SA2 carries one half charge, one half physical charge. So F is neutral. SA1 and SA2 is one half charged. Okay. No uh, this assignment actually does not matter. You can have some different assignments, but you know, finally you will get the same theory. Let me make sure, when you have a U2 gauge structure, is that related to this one half A? Oh, no, 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 U2 has nothing with this big A, right? Uh -huh. Okay, good, thank you. U2 will be the small A. Yeah, U2 is just a small A, yeah. Okay. So U2 is the internal gauge field, it's dynamic, so you need to integrate it in the path integral. But this big A is just a number. You do not integrate it in the path integral. No problem, but but you are on constraint the the background big A to be able to probe only in certain subsector, but not the integer big A. You need to have you only have you only have one half of A can probe. Uh, I, I mean, it's just a number, so it it doesn't matter. So it's no com no complex. No. So big A can be any number, any field. All right, thanks. Okay. Okay, so at zero temperature, we can, you know, we do not know how to deal with this kind of Hamiltonian, but we can have some mean field decoupling. So we just have some bilinear term. Uh, so if you analyze it safe consistently, you find that the dominant uh, decoupling is this one. So F dagger sign on each side. So there are two such kinds of coupling. So this coupling looks like just a counter coupling. If you are familiar with the heavy Fermi physics, uh, there are two such couplings because F can couple to SA1. It also can couple to SA2. So we have two different bands. Uh, but remember we have a SU2 gauge transformation at each set. So we can use this SU2 to fix a gauge. Uh, so we can make, make the phi2 always equal to zero. So F can only couple to the SA1. So that's the gauge I choose. Okay. So uh, I did a safe consistent calculation. So I indeed find a no zero phi1 at zero temperature. So obviously this will fix our U2 gauge field. So we need to understand what is remaining. Uh, so it turns out the U2 gauge field will be fixed down to U1. So I will label this remaining gauge field as alpha. And uh, it turns out the F and the sum of Fermi, so they couple to this remaining U1 gauge field alpha together. Because F and the sum hybridize them. So, so they are the same Fermi now. Uh, SA2 is different. So surprisingly, SA2 couples only to the physical gauge field. So th this kind of means that SA2 now is really an electron operator because it coupled to big A. Uh, it's actually very easy to see it because our pattern is like C equal to F dagger sin one sin two. But now I just say F dagger sin one is condensed. So I can just replace it with a number. And after that, SA2 and C has a no zero overlap. So SA2 can really be viewed as electron operator now. And F sin one, they are neutral. They still cap to the U1 gauge field. And their total feeling is one. So, so, so you can just view F and sum one as a spinner. So they can form some kind of spin liquid. Okay, so in another word, so the resulting ground state is some kind of FL star phase. You have a small pocket formed by SA2. That's an electron operator now. Uh, you have a spin liquid part formed by F sum one. 
Okay. So this can explain our you know, numerics in one dimension in which F sum one just form the spinner frame surface. And the sum two form the uh, small pocket. Okay. Uh, and I can also talk about some intuition I have for the condo Hesburg mode. So as I said, uh, our this unconventional TJ model can be viewed as the JK equal to minus infinite limit of this condo Hesburg mode. And this condo Hesburg model has another limit that JK is equal to po positive infinite. So in this case, it will recover just the conventional TJ mode. Uh, we know we will have a large firm surface here. So at zero, JK in the decoupling limit will have uh, this uh, Latinger liquid star phase or Fermi liquid star phase because D2 just decouple from the spin liquid part. So if you go to the right, so there must be a, some kind of phase transition happening, which I don't know, uh, but there must be because uh, you, you need to recover a large firm. But uh, what, what is surprising is that, so in our numerics, we found that uh, even in the minus infinity limit, we found this LL star phase. So somehow this decoupling phase can continuously cross over to the same phase at the minus infinity limit, despite they are coupling, they have a very large coupling. So our understanding is that in this limit, uh, we cannot use D2 operator, so it cannot move coherently, obviously. But the D2 operator will deform itself to be a different uh, emergent operator, this SA2. Uh, which can only be understood from the pattern theory. Uh, and uh, with this uh, emergent op operator, SA2, uh, then this electron operator SA2 can move coherently because the coupling to the localized spinner is vanishing with this kind of emergent op operator. So that's my understanding. Uh, basically, you know, SAT2 and the microscopic operator, operator will have a no zero overlap. But this no zero overlap is small because it's provided by the condensation of Denver cell wall in our pattern theory. And when we are at the small doping, it's very small. Uh, and this uh, no zero overlap survives only below some you know, coherent temperature scale. So, so that corresponds to the onset of the condensation of Denver cell wall. So if you go above this temperature scale, F Denver sum wall does not condense anymore, and you SA2 is not an electron operator anymore. So above this scale, it's something very incoherent, which I actually do not understand. So only below this temperature scale, we can say it's a Latitra liquid star phase. So in low energy, it looks like a decoupling phase, but it's you know it, it's not quite decoupling. Okay, uh, so that, that, that's my understanding. So is there any question? Yes, yeah, sir. Um, so this is, um, you, you still think about 1D or? Is uh, this is a 1D, but uh, I think you can generalize the picture to 2D. Uh, right, so this is black line, probably in 1D, it shouldn't exist, right? Because in 1D, you don't expect any transition in temperature. Uh, here, I, I think this is just a crossover. It, crossover. Yeah, it, it may not be a sharp phase transition. Okay. So basically, when you increase the temperature, you will find this overlap, Z, uh, will decrease continuously to zero. Right. Yeah, so actually, this overlap is another question I had. Uh, and again, probably it's formal and it's not important for your uh, discussion, but uh, it, uh, at least in 1D, uh, uh, this psi and D are both operators, I guess, right? So, well, operatable fields. Uh, and there should be, I mean, some comp compactification radius. Uh, so having just, you know, square root Z, which is, which can take any value, uh, may seem problematic. Uh, uh, okay. there is no problem with this. Yeah, so how, how, how to do this uh, arbitrary factor if psi and D are both, uh, say, Fermi fields? Uh, okay, so I, I think this is just a hand waving equation. It may not be okay, very right. precise. Uh, yeah. I, I, this is fine. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to provide some intuition. So right, I, yeah, so it, it, it's a guy design, so to speak. I mean, it's yeah. not a precise statement. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so 
So we can do the same thing in 2D, so like a square lattice. Uh, so of course in 2D, I cannot do numerics, so I just focus on the patterning field theory. Uh, so I hope it can still be accurate. Uh, so, so, so I do the calculation safe consistently. Uh, so, so again, I find this temperature scale uh, corresponding to the onset of F dagger sum. So below this scale, F dagger sum will condense. So after that, you can use the SAR2 as an electron operator, and F sum is just a spinner. Uh, but for square lattice, you find a different temperature scale uh, that corresponds to a pairing of the spinner F. So th this is a very familiar result. So incorporate the context. So you know the on square lattice FF, uh, they actually wanted to be in a D-wave pairing as such. Okay, uh, and because of this new term, uh, we actually have two different kind of FL star phase. So in this phase, we always have a small pocket coexist with the spin liquid. Uh, but in one phase, the spin liquid uh, F is a spinner fermi surface, but in the other phase, which exists at zero temperature. The spin liquid is actually a Z2 Dirac Fermi spin liquid uh, because the F wants to have a parity term. Okay. Uh, so in this first phase diagram, I actually found that for almost every doping, the ground state is a FR star phase with a Z2 Dirac Fermi spin liquid. So this is quite striking. Uh, so you can imagine a, a different uh, possibility that this uh, small pocket merge together with the spin liquid and form a large firm surface. Uh, this is possible. Uh, for example, in this right figure, uh, a different phase diagram corresponding to a different parameter. I actually found a, a single type of condo coupling. So it, it basically says, so, so this is a, this uh, uh, green line. It basically says below this green line, the electron operator SAR2 uh, where has a condo coupling with the spinner F. And because of this coupling, so the electron pocket and the spinner, they just uh, merge together and form a conventional phase. So the U1 gauge field will be fixed. So you have the Fermi, Fermi liquid phase or superconductor. So this is a familiar transition in heavy Fermi context. Uh, however, I found uh, you know, to have this uh, synchronous condo coupling, uh, it's actually very, very hard. So I needed to use some a reasonable large value of parameter, like J prime. So J prime is the coupling between the single and the double. So I needed to make it very large. So I, I don't think this is realistic. So my conjecture is that uh, for reasonable value of parameter, uh, a normal state uh, is just a, a small Fermi surface state. So the small pocket does not merge with the spinner part. Okay, uh, so of course I cannot rule out uh, uh, another possibility that the spinner just form a magnetic order instead of a Z2 spin liquid. You know, we, we really need to do numerics to decide which is favored. So, uh, but I wanted to emphasize that, that even if the spinner form a magnetic order. So the fact that we have a small pocket is still arising from mod physics. So, so a naive mean field theory based on SDW operator, SDW uh, parameter may still be not a good picture. So we still need to use some kind of pattern theory to understand it. Okay, uh, any question? Okay, so let me let me move on. So, uh, so in previous slides, I just show you for this unconventional uh, TJ model. It's uh, very likely that the ground state is uh, an exotic matter with a small firm surface. So then, a natural question is, you know, suppose we can choose some parameters, we can have a conventional Fermi liquid. Then, how does this uh, small Fermi surface state evolve to the large Fermi surface state? So, so. Is there any interesting quantum critical part? Uh, so there are many ways to choose such a small to Fermi surface large transition. Uh, here I just use a very simple model. So, so because this FL star phase is, you know, we get it because of model physics. So we need a large U. So a naive idea is we just decrease the U. So that in the small U limit, 
with a weak interaction, uh, we must recover a conventional firm liquid with, with large firm size. So there must be a, some kind of transition when we tune you. Uh, so motivated by this, uh, consider a two orbital Hubbard mode. So I just, uh, you know, in this Hubbard model, we have a D1 and a D2. Our later D2 has a slightly larger energy than D1. And I also included, uh, you know, Hubbard U, Honda's coupling. Uh, so the important point is that there is a limit that when we take U and J H too large, so we will recover the this spin triplet TJ model are just studied, and we, we know the ground state is a small firm surface. And at a small U, it must be a firm liquid. So there must be a phase transition when I tune you. Okay. Uh, so I studied this in water mesh using DMRG. So our two U and JH together with some fixed ratio. So at a smaller U, I indeed find a conventional Latinger liquid. But even within the conventional Latinger liquid, there are two phases. So one phase has a one single Fermi surface. Uh, the other one has two uh, Fermi surface. But this phase transition is very trivial. Okay. Uh, at a large U limit, we just get this Latinger liquid star phase I just described. So there is a phase transition. So this red line is a critical point I'm interested. Okay. Uh, so in the numerics, we can track the 2KF uh, for the Fermi surface. So at the zero U, uh, you find a single Fermi surface uh, whose momentum is one plus X pi. So this is just the Latinger theorem. And when we increase U, uh, at some point, this single Fermi surface just splits to two different Fermi surfaces. And after that, one large Fermi surface decreases its volume, and the small Fermi surface increases its volume. So until it hits this critical point, you see, at you see, uh, this large Fermi surface will become half fit. Okay. Uh, after that, it turns out that this large Fermi surface, half fit Fermi surface, just uh, goes through a multi transition, so it gapped out, and we are left with this, this small Fermi surface. So in, in total, we have three modes because this large Fermi surface still provides a spin mode. So although the charge is gapped out. Okay. Uh, so in numerics, we find this transition is a second order transition. Uh, there is actually a very simple picture to understand it. So you know, we can just ignore the small pocket, we just focus on the large pocket, which is half fit. And we can just say that when we tune you, we are effectively tuning the chemical potential for this large Fermi surface. Then what we are found is just a, a chemical potential to the mod transition for this large Fermi surface. Uh, this is kind of uh, you know, a one day version of a theory which was proposed by Santa. Uh, but now we have a numeric evidence for it. Uh, so this one dimensional chemical potential to the mode transition was well understood. Uh, there is a prediction that a partial E partial mu will have a singularity which has an exponent equal to one half. That's a square root singularity. Uh, we can check this numerically. In our mode. So I calculate partial E, partial U in numerics. And indeed, I find such a singularity, uh, but there is a problem. So it seems the exponent is 0 0.64. Uh, it's larger than this naive picture, which should be one half. So I think there are two possibilities. So the first one is that you know, we cannot ignore the small pocket. So the coupling to the small pocket is relevant. At, uh, it modifies the exponent, so we get some new universe, universality class. Uh, but uh, I wanted to say there is another more trivial possibility is that uh, it's just a numerical error. So unfortunately, so in this calculation, uh, we are limited to a very to a small border dimension. So border dimension of TMRG is equal to five thousand, because our computer is limited by its memory. So as a result, there are some errors in the energy. So, we, so I believe the exponent we extract is not very precise. So as a result, I cannot say whether this is a new universality class or not. So I hope we can do a better calculation to finally answer the question. So I hope this can be finished soon. But, uh, but we are confident that this is a second order transition between two different metallic states and uh, there is no symmetry breaking. 
evolving. So, so that's kind of an interesting transition to study. Okay, uh, so that's all of my talk. So in summary, so I wanted to convey just one message that there is a different kind of TJ mode in which the doped doubling is a spin triplet. And this model may be relevant to some kind of material like an euclid. And uh, I wanted to say this model may be very interesting. So actually, even in one dimension, we found some interesting ground state. And we hope to find more interesting physics in the future. Uh, thank you. Uh, 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 thank you for the very nice talk, Yaki. So uh, we can take questions now. I guess I will stop the recording.